wanted to see. Villapoto gets shoved off! Stewart is down again! Reed trying to fight him off! Kennard just makes a mistake! And that opens the door for Dungey! And now Reed has to mount an attack! They're oh! Oh, they're both down! They're both down! The anticipation for the 2011 Monster Energy Supercross season was unlike any other in history. Fans and riders alike were abuzz as the deepest field in recent memory took shape. With storylines aplenty, everyone was eager for the gate to drop for the start of the new year. The bullseye was firmly on defending champion Ryan Dungey, back to defend his title with the rock star Makita Suzuki team, and out to prove that the unbelievable highs of his rookie season were no fluke. The season also marked the return of a healthy James Stewart, the two-time champ paired again with San Manuel Yamaha looked to reassert himself as the dominant force in the sport. Former champ Chad Reed was also looking for a return to past success. Reed was now with 2-2 Motorsports Honda after missing much of last season with a broken hand. After a scary season-ending crash and injury, Ryan Villapoto was returning to the track. Before his injury, Villapoto was grabbing headlines with strong finishes and looked primed to build on those accomplishments with the Monster Energy Kawasaki team. Longtime fan favorite Kevin Windham was also back with Geico Power Sports Honda. Former lights champ Trey Kennard was pegged as one of the circuit's rising stars and was determined to prove that he belonged with Supercross's best. Kennard rode as part of the American Honda racing team. This is the story of the 2011 season of Monster Energy AMA Supercross, an FIM World Championship. The off-season hype was finally about to give way to season opening action in Anaheim, California at sold-out Angel Stadium. All the top contenders were looking to open with a big statement. Things began with an unexpected twist, however. Who's going to get the whole shot? It's Tedesco! And James Stewart is buried three quarters of the way back in the pack. After a horrific crash last year, Ryan Villapoto was primed to make some noise in Anaheim. Oh! In the oh. There's a pass for the lead. Villapoto takes advantage of a bobble by Tedesco. Defending champion Ryan Dungey was looking to match last season's lofty highs and would continue to make his push towards the top at the end of lap six. Here comes Dungey. Inside. Come on, Ryan. Can't get it done! Oh, oh, Tedesco fighting back so hard! As the race moved to the halfway point, the Anaheim crowd was treated to a three-way battle for third. Tedesco makes a mistake. Kennard around the outside. The Honda rider gets around the Kawasaki rider, and now here comes the big blue Yamaha. After Kennard pulled ahead of Tedesco, Stewart and Tedesco were left with a thrilling one-on-one -on -one battle that carried on until late in lap nine. Ivan Tedesco is one of those riders that will not hesitate. Oh, he's not gonna have the chance, there goes Stewart. Oh, oh he cut him off! He went wide over the jump! Oh, here you go. Here he comes. I see him. He got him there. Now, in the latter part of the race, Stewart again went toe-to-toe -to -toe with the rider directly in front of him. What a ride, though, for James Stewart. This came from way back, couple of big, oh, here's the there inside he is. move. There he is, done. Up ahead, there was no trouble for Villapoto. He's done it! Ryan Villapoto wins and a high one! It had to be an exhilarating moment for the rejuvenated Villapoto, who looked poised to have an excellent season just months after his horrific crash. It's nice to finally shake the cobwebs off and uh, get a great start like that. Uh, you know, lead a bunch of laps in the race and, and and come back with that win. Dungey and Stewart followed in second and third, respectively, to complete a podium full of the year's top contenders. Villapoto earned 25 points for the victory, with Dungey earning 22 for his second place finish in the season opener. Stewart's rally from a rocky start earned him 20 points, and Kennard's run was good for fourth and 18 points. Although he didn't make noise to the front of the pack, Chad Reed's diligence was rewarded with fifth place and 16 points. After Ryan Villapoto's Anaheim won success, the other top contenders knew they had to make their move at round two in Phoenix. Coming off a second place finish at Anaheim, Ryan Dungey eyed the top spot at Chase Field, where he earned his first ever Supercross victory the previous year. 
James Stewart was looking to forget his last memory of Phoenix, which saw him crash with Chad Reed and finish 15th. He'd go a long way towards erasing that memory with his great start. Stewart getting the whole shot. Now can anybody hang with him? Kevin Windham and Ryan Villopoto quickly found themselves in a battle for the second spot, with Villopoto edging past Windham in lap three. The packed house in Chase Field got what they came for in lap four, as Stewart and Villopoto went head to head. Here he comes. And Villopoto is right on him. James Stewart trying to hold on and prove that he's still the fastest man on the planet, but Ryan Villopoto trying to lay claim to that title. But Stewart kept his cool and retained and built his lead. As Stewart continued his smooth ride at the front of the pack, the man chasing him, Ryan Villopoto, got a scare, going down in a heap and losing his chance at catching Stewart. Oh, Villopoto has an issue. Villopoto has a problem. Moments later, the other Ryan, Dungey, found himself making gains, moving past Chad Reed and Justin Brayton to take fifth place. But Dungey would lose it nearly as quickly as he got it. Oh! Then he gets hung up into the 85 of Ryan Clark wow. and loses it all back just wow. like that. Stewart easily outdistanced his competition, taking care of his first win in over a year in grand fashion. So much. Preseason talk, is James Stewart back? You bet he is! He just won Phoenix to make a statement that he's ready to contest this 2011 championship. Stewart's victory was the 38th of his career, tying him for third all time with Chad Reed. I made a few mistakes and I was like, you know what? It is what it is, I'm a ride good and uh, man, it just feels good to be back out there. Ryan Villopoto, who had suffered from a flu bug earlier in the week, finished in second. Villapoto hung on to the points lead with 47, but Stewart was now just two points shy with 45. Kennard and Dungey were tied for third with 38 points. Reed's 34 points currently put him in fifth. Round three saw the Supercross riders heading back to California and into historic Dodger Stadium for the first time ever. The stadium had seen more than its share of dramatic moments over the years, and the third round of the season would live up to the hype. In a surprise start, Brett Metcalf took the whole shot. Metcalf trying to come around the outside. He's got it. What a start for this Suzuki rider, and he's joined by Austin Stroop on the Yamaha. Meanwhile, points leader Ryan Villopoto was in the middle of the pack. Metcalf's early lead wouldn't last long, as he took a tumble late in the second lap. Stay through the rhythm section that allows Stewart to close up the ball. Oh, down goes Metcalf! Dante surged into the lead at the end of the lap, with Stewart and Wyndham close behind. Villopoto, meanwhile, still languished in ninth. Stewart then made his push, going back and forth with Dungey. Brayton runs in third. Oh, look at that! Stewart tries to make the move on Dungey. Ryan counters. Stewart the two takes champ takes the move on Dungey. Stewart so quick through the whoops, he tries the inside on Dungey. He got him, but can he make it stick? Oh, and just as Dungey had a great move lined up, Wyndham got in the fight. Here's Kennard now. As Trey Kennard jockeyed with Wyndham in the top four, Villapoto emerged in the fourth lap to put the heat on both of them. This is 81's race on lap six of 20. Oh, oh Kennard, Kennard makes a mistake. Big problems. Big problems for Kennard. There goes Villapoto. Things were about to get very interesting at the front of the pack into lap nine. Could be the best race of the year. This is the one everybody wanted to see. These three for the bar. Villapoto's got second. After Villapoto pulled into second past Dungey, he began to close the gap on Stewart. Here's Villapoto. Did he get him? Not yet. Seemingly in control at the front, disaster struck Stewart. Oh, Stewart is down. Stewart is down. Villapoto's in the lead. Kennard and Dungey are by. At this point, Villapoto began to assert himself as the points leader pulled away from the competition. Dungey erased Kennard's lead for second place in lap 14, but Stewart wasn't yet out of the picture. So Stewart on Kennard. And still makes the triple. That was doubtful with that type of move. If he can still do that, so James Stewart, oh! Kennard coming back. 
Stewart secured second place on 16. Uh oh, Stewart to the inside. Oh, right a now. move. Wow. Villapoto was never seriously challenged again and captured his second win of the season. The inaugural Monster Energy AMA Supercross, an FIM World Championship victory at Dodger Stadium goes to Ryan Villapoto. Villapoto is the first two time winner of 2011. But the comeback victory certainly wasn't without some close calls. Villapoto was followed by Stewart and Dungey on the podium. Kennard and Brayton round out the top five. Started out not looking too good and uh, rode a little tentative the first couple laps and was able to uh, get around and uh, catch up and, and uh, put pressure on James and, and he washed the front end right out here and uh, you know went for the win. A clearly frustrated Stewart couldn't believe that he let the lead slip away. I'm very, very, very disappointed on this one. I, I just threw it away, and uh, you know, I just I feel bad for my team because you know we we tried working hard, and uh, hey, man, you can't win them on the ground. But you know, this won't happen again, and uh, you know, it feels good to just have some motivation. With 72 points, Villapoto had widened his lead to five points on second place, James Stewart. Ryan Dungey now took sole possession of third with 58 points, followed by fourth place Trey Kennard, who had 56 points. Chad Reed was in fifth with 48 points. Every rider wants a spot on the podium at night's end, but those celebrations are extremely rare without a great start. They're all in pursuit of the hole shot at the race's first turn. Well, getting a good start is, is is really key. You know, that's where the whole race starts, you know, and that's where you can, I guess people would say you can pass the 20 guys that are uh, right there with you. You can lead your own laps, you know, you can ride your own line and, and uh, try to put it down as hard as you can and not having to worry about switching up because somebody's in front of you. Before the gate drops, you got to make sure you get that release of the clutch right because even, even once it drops and you get just that little bit of a wheelie, it's hard to recover. So for me, I just try to make sure that I get a smooth release. Got to get a good jump, a good release off the uh, off the gate. Pull the whole shot, you know, you got a pretty 50% chance of trying to win the race. A start in, uh, in this group of athletes is tremendous. You know, I think that's definitely, uh, you know, 80% of the race, if not more. And, you know, it's the only place you can pass 19 other guys. And, uh, I think that's uh, the most important part of the race. Yeah, the starts are, are crucial, you know, especially this year, how stacked the class is. You know, there's you know, 10, 12 really good guys that could uh, be in the top five. For me to get a good start, I have to control my, uh, my breathing. I have to control my RPMs on the bike. Once you get out there, you're just nailing your shifts. Some great time on the line, and they all want to get there first. You got to get out front because you can run clean laps. You can run, you know, your pace and, and not have to deal with, you know, trying to be frustrated or get dirt on your goggles or, or anything like that. I'd rather pass 19 riders in three seconds than have to pass, you know, five or six or seven guys in the race for 20 minutes. So that's kind of the way I look at it. After the excitement of LA, Supercross headed to Oakland, where the circuit hadn't raced since 1984. With the track damp and sticky, a quick start would be important as the battle to gain the whole shot would be tight. Who's going to get the whole shot? Chad Ryan Reed Villapoto and Reed were right there. James Stewart hovered just behind them both and would take his chance to go to the top when disaster struck the front runner at the start of lap three. This is a rider who grew up racing in the state of Washington, so this is a guy that knows all about racing on slick oh, yeah. tracks and in the ring. Oh yeah, but you get to these... Oh, oh. Villapoto's down! There you go! Villapoto tosses it away! As the race hit its midway point, the battle for a second between Reed, Dungey, and Villapoto was heating up. Villapoto trying to take a shot at Dungey oh, again! Try. Couldn't get it! As they hit the underpass on 11, Dungey closed in. Now, side by side! Dungey pulls a tear off. Let's see if the outside works for him. Reed goes to the hip jump and Dungey takes the spot. Got him. With Villapoto gaining on third place Reed with just five laps to go, the track was again unkind to the points leader. Five oh. laps to go and Villapoto is down again.
again. As Stewart cruised to the finish, the night's drama seemed to be over. That was until Chad Reed snuck around Ryan Dungey right before the finish to capture second place. And Reed gets past Dungey at the line. But the night belonged to James Stewart, who moved into third all time with his 39th career Supercross victory and took hold of the 2011 points lead. Stewart now held a two point advantage over Villapoto for the top spot. Dungey continued to keep the third place position, but was now 14 points behind the leader. Despite a disastrous start in Oakland, Trey Kennard rebounded to take sixth and was in fourth with 71 points. One point shy of him was Reed. After taking the points lead in Oakland, James Stewart looked to continue his run at the top at Anaheim 2 and got off to the great start he needed, taking the whole shot and blowing past the competition. Stewart's right there. He's going to get the whole shot. Villapoto came up from the inside. While Ryan Villapoto and Chad Reed rounded out the top three, Ryan Dungey was buried in the back, setting the stage for a tortuous night for the defending champ. Look at, look at Dungey right here. He's in a mess of riders. After some spirited riding, Dungey made his way up to sixth in lap eight before disaster struck a lap later. Now oh, Dungey also. with problems. Dungey is off the track. Big problems for the reigning champ. The chain derailed. You can you see can it on the left. You can see it right here. The headlines for the night again belong to Stewart, who extended his points lead with his third win of the season. James Stewart becomes the first rider in 2011 to win three times as he takes the victory here at Angel Stadium. Finishing in second was Villapoto, who was back on the podium after stumbling in Oakland. After a slow start to the season, Reed celebrated another trip to the podium. A Supercross season stops since 1974. Houston looked to be the ideal place for the top challengers to push current points leader James Stewart. As a crowd of over 45,000 jammed into Reliance Stadium, Stewart would see his points lead come under siege. The title chase would get flipped on its head on the race's first turn. Oh, beating and banging as they come to the line. And Stewart's Kevin down. Windham is going to get the Nuclear Cowboys hole shot. Stewart got to the corner early, but he's down on top of Chad Reed. As the race moved into lap two, Wyndham, Davey Millsaps, and Brett Metcalf held down the top three. Kennard would make his run to the top in the next few laps. Kennard there coming after Millsaps. He takes him high in the corner. Kennard comes out with second place. Meanwhile, things were about to go from bad to worse for points leader Stewart. Stewart is up to 11th because he's right behind Michael Lessey on the KDM, and guess what? Stewart is down again. Up front, Wyndham looked comfortable in the top spot and would lap Stewart in lap 11, but the race was about to take another unexpected twist. The crowd cheering here tonight. And you know what? James Stewart will, you know, oh, oh, Wyndham, Wyndham is down. down. Unbelievable, what a mistake. Wyndham's terrible crash knocked him out of first and out of the race with what was later diagnosed as a concussion. And we've got a new leader. Things tightened up in the final few laps as Dungey and Kennard began going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the lead changing hands multiple times as the Houston crowd roared its approval. Dungey is the man that is aggressive right now. He is attacking. He's got some new lines. Kennard just makes a mistake. And that opens a door for Dungey. We've got a new leader in Houston. Bar to bar through this rhythm section. And once again, we swap the lead. After it looked like Kennard had finally put Dungey behind him for good at the start of the final lap, Dungey came on as the riders neared the finish line. Dungey charging after him. Can he get him? Could have come down Here to the he last comes. turn, Ralph. To the checkers. Here they come. Trey Kennard has done it. He lights the candles as he wins his first ever Monster Energy AMA Supercross and FIA World Championship event. Not only had Kennard won his first race, but he shot up to third in a points race that was becoming more dramatic by the week. Getting a better start helped a lot. Uh, kind of lucked into it. Stewart went down, a bunch of guys went down, and I think I was in fourth or third, and uh, 
tried to make my way up. K Dub went down. I was like, man, I'm in the lead. Although Dungey wasn't able to pull it off in the end, his second place finish kept him in the championship picture. After seeing the lead switch hands in Houston, points leader Ryan Villapoto and the Supercross circuit headed to San Diego. James Stewart looked to rebound, and after having won San Diego twice before, had reason for optimism. But no one on the tour enjoyed Qualcomm Stadium more than Chad Reed, who had won five times previously in the stadium. Over 53,000 screaming fans packed their way into Qualcomm Stadium as heavy rainfall drenched the area and the track. Jumping into the lead early, it's going to be Chad Reed. 2-2 Motorsports is number one on the opening lap. Stewart began his push towards the front at the end of the second lap, shooting past short and into third. Stewart through the whoops right here. Here he comes. Oh, he gets Stewart the hops. Trying to close in and take the position. The crowd cheering him on. At nearly the same moment, Kennard took the lead over Reed after a huge jump. Things took a twist in lap six. Trey Kennard is down, and there goes Stewart by. Reed was looking good at the halfway point of the race, leading second place Stewart by 6.5 seconds. Villapoto's trouble had Stewart in second and in position to reclaim the points lead. However, things would quickly change. Notice at the top of your screen, they are they are on Stewart. And that gap between, oh, Stewart has he a stall it. And the crowd goes crazy here in San Diego. He stalled the bike and Stewart is back to fourth and gets it going again. Just moments later, the track took down Kennard again. Oh, and Kennard is down. Trey Kennard has his problems. Dungey would hold on for an under the radar second place finish as the San Diego night again belonged to Chad Reed. And his new son Tate is gonna see daddy get a win in San Diego. Chad Reed has done it. 2-2 Motorsports is number one here tonight. The win was Reed's sixth career victory in San Diego, giving him more wins in San Diego than anyone else ever. Reed's win was his first since 2009. Dungey's second straight second place finish also pulled him back into the title race. Stewart took third, but he probably felt like his slip ups kept him from doing even better. Chad Reed's confidence was soaring after his win in San Diego, and he aimed to keep it going as the circuit headed down to Atlanta. A two-time winner in Atlanta, James Stewart had Ryan Villapoto and the points lead in his sights, now just three points back. However, reaching their goals was again putting old rivals Reed and Stewart on a collision course, and things would boil over in the Georgia Dome. Oh, Stewart gets rocketing out of the gate. Oh, yeah. He's going to get the hole shot as he cuts it back to the inside. Chad Reed That's is That's our seconds. nuclear Cowboys hole shot, and Reed is right there with him. So the two two-time Monster Energy champions go battling here in Georgia. With Trey Kennard, Villapoto, and Ryan Dungey filling out the top five, all the points leaders were in position to contend for the podium. A slight bobble by Stewart in the second lap gave the chasing Reed his chance. Oh, oh it's Stewart! There's the mistake! The crowd going crazy here in the Georgia Dome. Stewart with a little bit of a bobble. Reed's lead would reach its peak around lap eight, but Bubba was far from through, shrinking the gap as the race passed its midpoint. Watch this. He's going to go on the inside. Here comes Stewart. Oh, oh. so close, but no contact. They've been very, oh. very respectful of each other so far. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah, here's Reed. And Stewart just couldn't get it done. Oh, Stewart's messing with him. He's Show got the him. wheel. Yeah, he's got him where he wants him. Check him out. He's going to set him but up. But Reed is not going to be oh, intimidated oh, 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 at all. Oh. This is good battles. This is what it's all about. Supercross in Atlanta. Two oh. champions have it added here in the Georgia guess. Dome. The two active leaders in Supercross wins were now neck and neck with the stretch run on the horizon. We haven't seen much of a rivalry this year between these two guys, but it could be coming back right now. On lap 17, things got interesting. 
a second faster. Watch right here. It's close. Oh, Run the close on the heart hunting to oh, point. Really slows it right down. behind and him. And Stewart closes up now. If they weren't already, things began to get chippy in lap 19 with another lapped rider coming into focus. Regal's on the 30. He's oh, a younger rider. He's going to go inside Stewart oh, here. Stewart. Oh, oh, he's got oh. to Stewart shaved him right into his teammate. It's not over. With time running out and with Stewart in front, Reed took the ultimate risk. And now Reed has to mount an attack. They're oh. oh, they're both down. They're both down. Where's Villapoto? Where's Villapoto? There, there he goes. goes. Ryan Villapoto is by. Dungey's right there. there. As both riders struggled to get up, controversy reigned in Atlanta. Here they come, working their way to the checkered flag. Checkered flag falls for Ryan Villapoto. Dungey gets by for second. Oh, Ryan gets by oh, my God. Dungey gets what? second. The benefactor, Villapoto, would capture his third win of the season and build his points lead over Stewart to 10. As the podium ceremony approached, Stewart headed off the track, clearly frustrated over what had just transpired. Dungey took home his third straight second place finish, and Reed edged out Stewart for third. The drama of the 2011 race for the title had clearly gone to another level, and the top five riders were now only separated by 26 points with nine races to go. Indianapolis's Lucas Oil Stadium would host round 10 as Ryan Villapoto chased his fifth race win of the season before a crowd of over 60,000. Although Chad Reed would edge him out for the whole shot, Villapoto would make his push at the end of the first lap. Who's going to get the nuclear Cowboys whole shot? Brian Villapoto and Chad Reed! James Stewart's start was not as bright and struggled to find his groove on the Indianapolis track. I'll tell you what, Ralph, Ooh, James Stewart whoa, makes a Stewart, big mistake. Big problems. And that opens the door for Tedesco. Oh, Stewart, another mistake! Ooh. Oh, and that's going to allow Tedesco again to come by. But Stewart rebounds once again. In lap three, Stewart would pass Ivan Tedesco for fourth and eyed Ryan Dungey ahead. As the race passed the midway point, Dungey closed in on Reed. Reed trying to fight him off. But Dungey's aggressiveness wouldn't pay off. Canary on the 62. And again, these two right along. Oh, oh down goes Dungey. There goes Stewart. Reed's second place standing wasn't safe, however, as Stewart loomed in lap 12. And they've had their share of battles, and there goes Stewart. For the second straight year, Villapoto would grab first in Indianapolis. Villapoto coming to the checkered flag. He's going to win his third through the month of Moto Mayhem. With second going to Stewart, Reed would then have to hold off Dungey for third in an exciting finish. Here comes Dungey battling with Reed. Reed still cutting him off and just holds on to take third. Maybe it was the full moon, or maybe it was something in the air. But as the series moved to Everbank Field in Jacksonville, things took a turn for the surreal. Ryan Villapoto entered the night with a bulky 26-point lead in the standings, but things would get troublesome for him in the night's second qualifying heat. Big pile up in the back. Villapoto in there. and the two of Ryan Villapoto, uh -oh. and Villapoto's walking away. Ryan Villapoto sits down on a tough block. Villapoto's collision with Matt Bonney put him into the last chance qualifier, but his bad luck wouldn't end there. LCQ underway, Villapoto gets shoved off! He's off the course! He's now running the risk. He gets together with Brayton. They might not make the main. Villapoto sets ninth place on the final lap. Checkered flag and the points leader is not going to the main event. Villapoto's failure to qualify for the main event was the first time the points leader didn't qualify in nearly a decade. Suddenly, the main event was lacking the front runner, and all the top contenders knew that this could be their opportunity to erase most of Villapoto's big lead. Mike Alessi would take the whole shot with Trey Kennard close behind, but that wasn't nearly the biggest story at the start of the race as another superstar would be sidelined. Another big wreck! Stewart's down! Stewart is down in this 
one. The seven is out. The 26 of Michael Byrd is down. Nick Way is down on the 27. I cannot believe what I'm seeing. He is hurt. Big time James. hurt, unfortunately. James Stewart, the Astrid medical crew, is down there assisting all of the riders. The former champ had to be carted off on a stretcher and taken to a nearby hospital where he stayed overnight. With the Jacksonville night becoming wilder by the second, Kennard held the lead with Chad Reed and Ryan Dungey following him. Sensing the night's opportunity, Reed closed in inside lap 18. And Reed charges into the woods again. Up high, he goes to the berm, cuts back, Reed squares him up. We've got a new leader in Jacksonville. Contact, Kennard fights back, Trey Kennard. He's gonna do it, his second win of 2011. Kennard would hold on for his second victory of the season. Man, I just want to give God the glory and uh, man, just thank him so much. And, and the whole the, the Honda team, it's just, uh, it's been a great season and man, I'm just so excited right now. The top title contenders who endured disastrous evenings. Villapoto now led Reed by just seven in the points race with Dungey 18 points back. Stewart was now 23 points behind, while Kennard climbed back into the discussion with his great night. He had 194 points. The madness in Jacksonville would set up Supercross's only trip north of the border as the series moved to the Rogers Center in Toronto for round 12. With a crowd of over 45,000 watching, Ryan Villapoto would look to rebound on the same track he won in 2010. The race began with a whole shot surprise. Who's gonna get the Nuclear Cowboys whole shot? How about Fabian Iswar on the factory Kawasaki? Without a race win this season, Ryan Dungey quickly put himself in prime position to end his drought. Ryan Dungey has not won a main event since Vegas a year ago. He just takes the lead here in Toronto. Chad Reed and Trey Kennard filled out the top three as lap three progressed. Lab 3 would also be the scene of another Stuart Villapoto breakdown. Stewart's in 10th, and they both go down! Just like that when we're talking about him. Villapoto's struggling to get going. Stewart puts a couple of bikes between the two of them. While Stewart was able to get back on his bike and quickly continue, Villapoto labored off the track to get his throttle checked by his crew. He's talking to his mechanic, Mike Williamson, right there. Problem with the throttle housing and the throttle area. The top three wouldn't budge the rest of the way. And despite a late challenge by Reed, Dungey would grab his first victory of the year. So much pressure, so much weight on the shoulders of Ryan Dungey. The reigning champion won it all last year. And he's won it here tonight in Toronto. He did it. He's a winner in 2011. The 2010 champion was all smiles. I just got to give it up to the whole team, Rockstar, Mickey Suzuki. We've been working for this win for a while, and uh, it feels great to pull it off. Before the mayhem and drama of a Monster Energy Supercross event, fans of all ages pile into the pits where they can get up close with the sport's biggest superstars. Autographs, pictures, promotional giveaways, and an electric pre-race atmosphere that's like no other in sports. The Monster Energy Party in the Pits. I think fans make our sport go round, and, and for us to be able to interact with them, you know, that's something that uh, in most sports you're not able to do. I think that's a really cool aspect of our sport. And, and uh, something that kind of makes it what it is. As for fans, they get to show up, see kind of, you know, what's going on, kind of how we do it. They get to get up close with the bikes and the semis and, and us riders, you know, just kind of hang out with us all day. So it's uh, an experience that's pretty cool for them. Well, you know, I try to do a little bit extra with my fans. You know, I just gave away uh, four sweet tickets, you know, to hang out with my family, you know, just something to do on Twitter. But, I mean, it's amazing, you know, with the whole party going on, it's the atmosphere. You see all these fans out here just, Every time you walk around, you feel like you're at a rock concert. It's cool just to talk to the other dudes that ride, and you know, we're exactly that. We love to ride bikes, love to have fun, and they're in the same position. We're just doing what we love uh, to do week in, week out. You know, you can have a bad day and then sign autographs and suddenly come out for the last practice and feel a whole lot better, you know, just how much they appreciate you, how excited they are to see you, and 
you know, some of the kind things that they say to you. Well, having the pit party in the pits for, I mean, every all 17 rounds, it's it's a big part of, uh, of racing, you know. It gives us a chance to show our appreciation to the fans as well as interacting with them, you know, because without them, Supercross wouldn't be what it is today and they make it that much funner. With Chad Reed now ahead in the points race, the circuit headed back to Texas for round 13 in Arlington. As Supercross's best took to the track at Cowboy Stadium, it was a whole shot veteran taking the early lead with the points race contenders right behind him. Who's gonna get the nuclear Cowboys whole shot? It looks like it could be a KTM. It is, it's Michael Lessi. Your top title contenders, Dungey and Kennard are up front. Chad Kennard, Reed. Kennard takes the lead away on that factory backed Honda. Reed now challenging from fourth as Alessi gets into Dungey and contact is made. There's Stewart on the seven, Villapoto on the two, as they're all trying to get in the mix. At the end of the first lap, it became clear that the Chad Reed James Stewart rivalry would get yet another exciting chapter as the two battled for second place. Start up front and challenge for the win. Here's Stewart trying to get inside of Reed, and there's history between these two this year. They had a big coming together in Atlanta. Let's see if it reignites here tonight. In the whoops, the back and forth continued. Reed not backing down as Stewart gets up on the front wheel, and Reed takes second place away. The Riders showdown for second would culminate in lap eight and provide a dramatic twist to the points race. Oh, and he crashes into Reed! And Reed Stewart the goes boys. right into Reed and goes over the banking is Reed. And we said those two have had some run-ins. We showed you the Atlanta incident earlier today, and Dungey now goes to second. While Stewart and Reed tried to recover, it was Ryan Villapoto taking full advantage of the moment, passing Ryan Dungey for second in lap 11 and taking it all the way to the finish. No one came close to Trey Kennard on the night, though, as the young gun claimed his third win of the season. Their young rookie just won his third Monster Energy AMA Supercross and FIM Championship race of 2011. Villapoto's second place finish would shoot him back into the top spot as Reed's disastrous crash led to an eighth place finish. Reed now sat just one point in front of Dungey for second place in the points race. Kennard and Stewart sat 16 and 21 points behind respectively. When they're not battling a fellow rider for position during a race, Supercross's best also have to pay mind to a less obvious obstacle while racing, the track itself. The ability to adapt to the changes in the track is a must for any successful rider. The track just gets beat up half the time. Normally, you know, like the daytime, it'll kind of start off, you know, a little bit more moisture than normal, and then it just, by the night program, it's like we've got the, the race that counts the most and the track's at its worst. Once we take off, you know, it's 20 bikes out there hammering for 20, 20 laps each rider, and uh, every time you come around to a new track, that, that rut's a little deeper, a little choppier even, and uh, the track starts to fade away too, but it changes dramatically. You know, you get concrete on some of these things where they're low areas, ruts and all that. You know, you just got to be able to attack it and, and adjust to, you know, all 20 laps. You know, bike setup's a key part to all that and then, um, you know, everything else just kind of rolls from there. So the tracks deteriorate pretty quick, just depending on where we're, where we're at. If we're on the East Coast, the dirt's a lot softer, so, you know, we might have to change up our lines two, three times in a, in, in a main, but as, as for West Coast stuff, when we're like Phoenix, that's really hard. We have basically can run our line the whole time, the whole 20 laps. When you go through a line, there's going to be 20 other bikes go through that line before you get back to it. It's an evolving race surface and one that you got to kind of try to stay ahead of the game and realize, okay, man, that rut felt a little bit too deep. Next lap through, I need to be looking for something new. And it's uh, not always perfect, not always an exact science, but you got to think about ahead of the game and, and, and find out how things are going to change. After Kennard's win in Dallas, Supercross headed to the gateway to the west, St. Louis. A crowd of nearly 60,000 would see a whole shot surprise, but four of the top contenders were hot on the trail. Ivan Tedesco has been so good, and he gets it. Tedesco on that Harton Huntington number nine. Dungey second, Stewart third. Well, it's Stewart. He's had four whole shots this year. He's led the most laps at 72, and he has been flying here tonight in the heat races, and there he goes. Coming up the inside is Stewart, and Dungey squares him right up. 
James Stewart has not won since Anaheim 2, going back some, what, nine races? Eight I races, there he is to the inside. Here he goes. Stewart back into the lead. While Stewart held the lead, Dungey, Reed, and Villapoto filled out the top four. As the race wore on, the top two riders in the points race, Reed and Villapoto, would go toe to toe in the fight for third, but one would soon run into trouble in lap eight. I believe that Ryan Villapoto has picked up on a new line. Watch as he comes out of this turn here. Triple! Oh, Reed, it's a tough block! The tough blocks goes Reed! And that's going to bite the two-time champion! Up front, the outlook was finally bright again for Stewart. James Stewart has battled through the longest windless drought of his career. And tonight in St. Louis, he wins it! The nine-race drought was over as Stewart claimed his fourth win of the season and first since Anaheim 2. The win was a welcome sight for the young superstar after a particularly trying week. I had a rough time in my life, you know, lately, you know, on and off the track. And, uh, you know, I just want to say thank you to all my sponsors that stuck behind me. All the fans out there, you know, it's, uh, it's, pretty, it's pretty tough, you know. It's, uh, you know, you always expect it to be good. And, uh, you know, but everybody stuck behind me no matter what. You know, we was having some bad luck and stuff. And, uh, you know, like I say, you know, I'm just so happy to get a win for not only myself, but my fans. And, uh, you know, for a while, I felt like I let you guys down. Villapoto's third place finish kept him out front in the points race as he now led by five. As Supercross rolled into Seattle, the festivities would begin without one of the top riders, as Trey Kennard suffered a non-displaced fracture to his femur during a Honda Racing Team test in the middle of the week, and would miss the last three weeks of the season. As things got underway at a damp quest field, the whole shot and first lap battle looked like a near mirror image of the previous week. Cutting through on the inside! Ivan Tedesco takes that whole shot. Stewart and Reed right here. Reed takes him up wide. The heated rivalry between Reed and Stewart once again took center stage out on the track. This is going to be an all out battle between him and James Stewart. Oh, they've had so much history, especially this year. And Reed and Stewart both bobble in that whoop section. And Reed jumps back out into the lead. Now, look at Stewart counter, and right there with him comes the number 14 of Kevin Windham. While those two battled it out at the top, the other two top contenders, Ryan Villapoto and Ryan Dungey, were outside the top 10 as lap two progressed. Both looked to salvage points early. Midway through lap 18, Reed looked to have second place all but sewn up. Two races to go, that would really tighten this thing up. And the thing is- Oh, Reed! Oh, man! There's a mistake that you didn't want to see for Chad Reed. Man, what a hard hit. And can he salvage second? Can he get going again? After he got back on the bike, Reed quickly discovered that Villapoto had nearly caught up with him for third place. Villapoto and Reed getting together and getting together again. Reed doing everything he can to fend him off. The fierce battle didn't quite make it to the finish line, however. This will be career win number 42 for him, and Villapoto's down! Now, what happens to him? Reed would hang on to third, but for the second week in a row, the story was James Stewart, who notched his fifth win of the season. Stewart's victory brought him within nine of Villapoto, who had finished in fourth. A chilly Salt Lake City was the site of the last race before the finals in Las Vegas, and one of the title challengers would take the whole shot. Who's going to get the Nuclear Cowboys hole shot? Stewart looking to jump out front. Oh, he bobbles in the corner. But Stewart's going to get that hole shot. He got the start that he wanted. Now, where's Reed? Here comes 2-2 Motorsports. He's up in second place. As Stewart and Reed held first and second, Ryan Villapoto and Ryan Dungey soon made their way into the top four. By lap seven, Villapoto was putting the pressure on second place Reed. Reed makes a mistake, Villapoto oh, goes that by. opens the door, and there he goes. Out in front of the pack, Stewart was looking to claim his third straight race win, but bad luck would strike in lap eight. Despite the tumble, Stewart still had time to rebound, but just moments later. There goes Villapoto, and this championship takes another twist, and there goes Stewart again! 
You can see it coming. Oh, James Stewart. There's his mechanic watching. Can Stewart now get back on the bike and regain? Despite a late charge by Reed, Salt Lake City belonged to the points leader, Ryan Villapoto. Villapoto to the checkered flag. He lights the candles and extends his points lead here tonight. Heading into Vegas, Villapoto had increased his lead to nine over second place Reed. Dungey was now behind by 12 points and Stewart's title hopes had suffered a massive blow. With 16 rounds in the books, all eyes were locked on Las Vegas for the culmination of the greatest Supercross season ever. The top contenders look to finish the year with a win as the 2011 season of Monster Energy AMA Supercross and FIM World Championship drew to a close. As the gate dropped on the final main event of the season, the battle for the whole shot was between two riders sitting outside of the title race. Michael Essie gets the whole shot. Stewart is back in third. Winda takes the move to take the lead and listen to the crowd cheering him on. Desperate for the victory, James Stewart pressured Windham. Here he comes. Stewart had the lead but can't hold on. Doubles back. Through the walls, oh. gets that rear end really oh. loose. And Windham's right there. Bar bar with him through the tunnel. Stewart and Windham engaged in a frantic fight at the front of the pack but things took an unbelievable turn in lap seven. With the Vegas crowd still reeling from the frightening crash, the top two contenders in the points race went head to head. And Reed putting on a show. Here he comes. Right after Villapoto. Oh, here we go, guys. How's this pass gonna go? These guys. Ryan Villapoto's uh, right very defensively uh, right now. Yeah, and Reed's got way oh, too much Reed respect there. Oh, Reed goes for... right to the inside and jumps his way into the lead. It was then Ryan Dungey putting the heat on Villapoto for second place. Look at Dungey working the inside on the bottom here through the sweeper. He's up to second. Smart ride. As the race neared its finish, Dungey closed in on Reed. Here he comes, Ryan Dungey. Oh, what a mouthful oh, of Oh, he goes sand. inside. Nope, can't do it there. Left rider working to his advantage. Oh, boy, that held up Dungey. Reed wouldn't falter, however, finishing his season in style. This isn't over yet, fans. Here comes Dungey, looking around Reed. Where is he going to go? Oh, Reed. They bob a little bit. So Chadry takes the win here tonight in Las Vegas. But in the end, the greatest season in Supercross history belonged to one man, Ryan Villapoto. As the fireworks go off, Ryan Villapoto has done it. He has won his first ever Monster Energy AMA Supercross and a FIM World Championship. It's awesome, you know, I'm just glad it's over. Um, you know, I put in so much work this year, the whole team, the trainer, my fiance, you know, just everybody, and uh, you know, the work was done, I, and and I think that to back it up, the Lord Jesus Christ is the one that, uh, you know, helped me through this, because, uh, you know, all the training was done, preparation was all done, so, you know, couldn't have done it without him. As the curtain fell on the greatest Supercross season ever, thoughts turned to the 2012 season. Could it get even better? Ryan Villapoto will have to defend his title against a deep and hungry field, as Chad Reed, Ryan Dungey, James Stewart, and Trey Kennard all want what Villapoto has, the number one plate. We'll see you in Anaheim next year.